first of your country or, for instance, of your wife and children? No, I feel for my country and my people. And then your wife and children? And then what my family is. I, I love my people more. My father loved his people more than his family. Yes. yes. And we are proud of that. And you're proud of that? I'm proud of that, yes. Yeah, yes. Because my father used to say, unless you love your family, children, how can you love your people? Yeah. A person, if he can love more his people, yeah. he can sacrifice his life for the people. That's something wonderful. But Sheikh Mujib struggled as leader. Bangladesh was in ruins, unable to recover from the effects of the war. As we watched the refugees, suddenly we noticed a curious movement. We moved nearer and she turned out to be an old woman aged anything between 80 and 100. She appeared to understand my questions, but would only reply, all gone, nothing left, none left. Million and billion people, you know, they flee from this country. Their houses been burned. There was no food, no currency, nothing. It was just the ravaged, war ravaged country. Economic collapse, food shortages, and terrible poverty. People turned against Muji. Revolutionaries are not necessarily good statespeople, and I didn't think he had. Uh, he was sufficiently aware of that difference. He tried to run it badly, uh, but the things that went wrong started with the one-party system. In a desperate bid to save the country, Mujib cast democracy aside. Your father had surprisingly uh, announced he was going to have a one-party state. Was that was that a good idea? Well, you see, as because my father loved his people and he wanted to ensure people a better life. That time, um, he thought that he should take some steps so that he can rec recover the economic situation very quickly and rebuild this country. It is not exactly one party. He wanted everybody to be united for development of the country. I asked this question to my father. He told me that at least for three, four years we have to continue that. So he was, he, he, he was suspending democracy but going to bring back democracy yes. in another no, few, few the years. Democracy you're was yeah. there. Democracy was there. He wanted to bring back parliamentary system of democracy after three years. In the early hours of August the 15th, 1975, Sheikh Hazina's life was to change forever. You were in Germany at that time, weren't you? That's with, true. With, with your sister. Yes. How, how did you get? the news. In the early morning, a phone call rang. I don't know that day that phone, still I feel the, the horrible sound I heard. We were staying with our ambassador, the ambassador's house. So ambassador himself, you know, pick up the phone. Then he didn't say anything. He said that you call your husband. Then I said, oh, why? You can tell me. Then he said, no, please wake him up. Then I wake him up. He went there. And then he told him that there was a coup in Bangladesh. A group of rebel army officers had taken matters into their own hands. Still, we didn't know what really happened. Because the television, it was in German language, so we couldn't understand much. The officers burst into Sheikh Mujib's house in the middle of the night. They went from room to room on a killing spree. My feeling was that then nobody is there. Perhaps we lost everybody. 
the same day, our ambassador, he took me to his room, he has his wife. Then he told me that what happened, everybody was assassinated. They slaughtered everybody in the house. Seventeen members of the family, including Sheikh Azina's father, her mother, and her three brothers. The intention was to kill off the bloodline. Sheikh Azina had to explain that to her younger sister, Rahana. I couldn't tell her what really happened. She was so young, you know, she is ten years younger than me. And I thought that she should know gradually. I was only four years old when um, our family was murdered and my grandfather was killed and my sister was even younger and my mother didn't want to tell us what happened it was too uh, tragic uh, you know for uh, it would have been too traumatic for a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old but what she would do instead is she would cry all day when you lost so many of your family but at the same time you were not permitted to attend their funeral? No. Actually, they didn't allow us to come back to our country. We tried to come back. We reached Delhi. But after coming there, you know, I met Indira Gandhi. She offered us that you can stay here because we are not allowed to come back to Bangladesh. Sheikh Mujib is buried in the family village of Tungipara. These Bengali people, my father loved them so much. How could they kill him? How could they assassinate them? It was a big shock for us. A big shock. It was very difficult to believe. Orphaned, exiled and devastated. One thing kept Sheikh Hazina going. She was determined to complete her father's mission. She was very close to my grandfather. She was the eldest and uh, he would tell her about his dreams, about his vision for Bangladesh. And uh, she, knew, she knows what he intended to accomplish, and he wasn't able to do that. So she has completely taken it upon herself to finish his vision of what we call Shonar Bangla, Golden Bengal. We'll find out how she went about it in part two. On counting the cost, technology that really matters. We'll tell you about the unity here, in a way. We've seen her devastation following the assassination of her family. How could they kill him? How could they assassinate him? She would go on to become a powerful but controversial leader. This is not a nation that takes care of its own people. And now she's fighting to win a third election. If they vote for me, I'm here. If they don't, I'm not here. Thank you so much. I've returned to Bangladesh for the first time in 41 years. I'm traveling around the country with the Prime Minister, Sheikh Hazina. She's showing me some of the places that mean most to her. Bangladesh is the eighth most populous nation in the world. Two-thirds of the population, more than a hundred million people, live in the countryside. A thousand years ago, when it was part of northern India, Islam swept across the region. And today, 90% of Bangladeshis are Muslim. But there are Hindu temples alongside mosques in most villages. And everywhere there are rivers. They are the lifeblood of the country. Villagers whose lives and traditions have changed little over hundreds of years depend on them. Sheikh Hazina has a vision for the country, a golden Bangladesh, she calls it. 
following on from her father's vision. It's her life's mission. A Bangladesh where every man, woman and child has the basic necessities of life, uh, in a food, shelter, clothing, education, uh, medical care. Uh, a Bangladesh where everyone is at peace. Uh, they don't have to be wealthy, but there is no poverty, there is no uh, shortage. That's, that's really the dream of a golden bingo. Today, dignitaries line up to meet her. But she wasn't always welcome. Hello, we welcome you on the soil of Tungipara. Thank you very the much. Land of Father of the Nation. Well, that is a great honor to be here. In 1975, her father dead, her family murdered, and Bangladesh in meltdown. Sheikh Hazina was exiled in India. And so begins a tumultuous era of coups, counter-coups and assassinations. After 75, about uh, 18 coups that, that took place in our country. So there was no democracy at all. Sheikh Hazina was ready to fight for democracy in Bangladesh. And in 1981, she brought her family home. They thought that nobody from this blood will come back and take, you know, the initiative. But I came back here, took the challenge. My children were very young. It was very difficult to come back. And the, the then government tried to prevent me so that I...